Hi right, guys, welcome back to Physic 150, Chapter 3, Capacitor. Okay, capacitor is one of the device uh, basically used in electronic or any electrical system to store electrical charge. Uh, there will be three electrical device basically that you need to learn in this uh, course. First one you already know, uh, that one in form 4, form 5, you learn that as a resistor, but we're going to look at this uh, in next uh, few chapters again. The second one is a capacitor, and then the third one will be more importantly when we come to a magnetic field, which is an inductor. Uh, inductor physically is actually a solenoid. Now, three of these uh, components combined is going to become a, ve uh, a basic uh, requirement to set up a more advanced circuit. Okay, so... Uh, we look at capacitor. Now, uh, capacitor, the purpose of capacitor, number one, is to store charge. In other words, you are storing electrical energy in the form of electric field. Okay? And then number two, to release charge in a very fast manner okay, in a very short amount of time okay so that is a uh, two most important thing uh, to store charge you can charge capacitor very fast uh, you can release a charge in the capacitor also very fast and that's why capacitor is very uh, important when you come to charging and discharging uh, processes for example uh, if you look at a uh, or you call it a uh, charging system. A charging system, normally a good charging electrical system, normally if you use a capacitor to replace a battery, theoretically uh, it will be last forever and then the charging time is very short compared to a car battery. Car battery you need about uh, six, eight hours depending on the charging current and also the temperature and also the size of the battery. But for capacitor, the charging time is much, much shorter. So I believe in the future, if we are still, uh, if we are replacing battery, most probably capacitor will be the one being uh, used. Uh, other than capacitor, of course, there are some other uh, 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 charge storing device like uh, uh, graphene and so on, and then also uh, electrical device like uh, fuel cell. All right. So those are just example. But first, we look at the uh, capacitor, the design of capacitor. The design of capacitor actually is very simple. Okay, what you need is just two pieces of metal. Okay, two pieces of metal, same size, and then we place them uh, face to face. Okay, and then we need two electrodes. Right, so that is our uh, very simple capacitor. Now, when you apply, okay, when you apply a uh, uh, positive and negative charge to one of uh, to one of the plates so you're going to set up this electric field in between them okay so this electric field which is e internal or e original uh, is going to be existing inside here even if you take away the battery Okay, even if you take out the battery with condition, there's no leaking in the process. All right. So this is how we store electrical energy inside a uh, capacitor. All right. So if we touch these two terminal, which a capacitor that's already charged, if we touch these two terminal, what happens is the charge will flow, which is the electron on the negative plate here we started to get attracted to the positive plate and then the current flow is from the positive to the negative plate and this one is what we call discharging so during discharging uh, it can do work if you connect it to a resistor it can produce heat if you connect to a LED it can actually light up so we convert to light if you connect to a buzzer or speaker it can produce sound so it actually is a uh, quite uh, analogous to the function of a battery okay so that is the design of the capacitor now the symbol okay use for capacitor we have this one electronic system capacitor use we follow exactly the design of the capacitor so see this is the capacitor use the symbol for capacitor 
But how do we differentiate the positive and the negative? Well, to make it simple, we normally have this positive and negative like that. Or there are some other way to do so, especially in printed text. Okay, so in a printed text, so normally we have this type of uh, drawing with a positive side shaded. Okay, so this one they won't tell you. Okay. Uh, which one positive or negative but assume you know the shaded one is actually positive the not shaded one is negative or there is a uh, one other way which uh, they curve the positive side okay they curve the positive plate something like this okay so when it is curved like that so this one is to represent positive all right so these are way in which we use a symbol for capacitor but our case we mostly use this one okay but in printed question sometimes they use this one we seldom have this one this one is uh, normally in a quite a very old uh, circuit diagram or sometimes you look at electrical okay electrical product uh, come with a electronic diagram they still have this type of symbol okay so as long as you have uh, this type of symbol they're all representing capacitor all right now there is another type which we actually uh, to tell people that the capacitor value can be changed okay the ability to store charge can be changed so we call this one variable capacitor and normally it has this symbol okay so uh, normally this type of capacitor their value are very small they are not electrolytic type they are normally ceramic type so this one is normally uh, either way positive negative doesn't matter okay it doesn't matter so this one is variable capacitor okay variable capacitor normally variable capacitor the value are very small normally a few hundred picofarad and also a few nano maybe okay so these are example of variable capacitor and the symbol that we use. All right. Now we look at real design. Okay, real design of capacitor. Okay, in a factory. Okay, our real design of capacitor is it consists of aluminum foil. Remember, our design is made out of two foil, two uh, metal plate which are facing each other so we want to store as much charge as possible so to store charge to be uh, to uh, uh, to store a lot of charge you need a very large surface area so definitely you're going to make a square with the size of your roof so it's quite inconvenient so what uh, they do during design is they use a very long strip of aluminum foil very long okay sometimes maybe go up to a few uh, 10 of a meter if you unroll them they can come to 10 of a meter so one side will be uh, aluminum foil and then you have another aluminum foil on the other side okay another one here so that means they are facing each other lah. okay they are facing each other here so this is our aluminum foil but we also want the electric field to be intense so when you want them to be intense you need to put something in between so that this plate number one and number two or foil one foil two they are not in contact so you need to put something in between that something in between is an insulator okay so we put insulator normally the insulator we cover the whole surface it should be larger than what we have uh, for this one but here we only draw uh, about the same size okay so this is our insulator so the purpose of the insulator is to be able for the, the foil to get as near as possible without any short circuit okay without any short circuit so the possible uh, insulator are something like paper okay wax paper paper that are stuck in oil or maybe wax okay because uh, those are the olden day nowadays we have uh, so many material okay so many material used so now we look at the design here you're gonna have one electrode coming out here 
and then another electron coming out the other side okay the other side it depends on how you put them okay so now we label this is the uh, electron this one also the electron and then these are the aluminum foil and this one also the other one okay aluminum foil and then the blue color this one is an insulator now insulator in this chapter we have another name it is called dielectric okay dielectric okay so this is basically how capacitor is made of course uh using this method is going to be like uh, very tedious and is very time consuming later we look at another type of uh, manufacturing process now this uh capacitor after that will be rolled up okay it will be rolled up so when you roll up they're going to look like uh, something like this okay you roll them up and this is what you get of course with the insulator in between them so the insulator is for the purpose to separate that two pieces of aluminum foil and then you have two electrodes coming out one from the top and then one from the bottom and these two electrodes are definitely not touching each other all right so now you put the packaging on and then you have a capacitor okay so capacitor with a packaging on with these two terminal coming out and then you have uh, normally the negative side okay if let's assume this is a negative electrode so that means this is negative the negative side normally are labeled with a band okay with a band showing uh, some sort like a negative thing uh, i have a few capacitor here let me find out first Okay, I have some of the example of capacitor. Uh, they might look different. Okay, so for example, this is uh, one of the capacitor. This is 16 volt, 22,000 microfarad. This is huge, and you see that this is a negative terminal. How do I know? Because it show here this one is negative terminal, and then another one will be something like this also. Uh, this one is another type of uh, capacitor. Uh, negative terminal also shown here so I know this is negative terminal and this value is 50 volt and 2200 uh, 2, microfarad there are some other which is very small sometimes okay, if you look at this this one is small okay, this is very small for example this one this is uh, huge uh, small so I let you compare the size uh, these are just some of their size okay and this one in between somewhere in between and i have some other okay something that looks like this also have all right so see the old pattern are the same the negative one they have all this strip negative 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 this one also the same except it's very uh, small so here you see the black strip negative uh, this one also the same this one black strip negative so these are example of capacitor that have polarity Another type of capacitor that does not have polarity are something that looks like this. These are capacitors that does not have the positive and the negative terminal. Something that looks like this. These are normally for high frequency okay, application. All right? So these are example. So you see that they have no dark band whatsoever to tell where the positive and negative. Uh, these are normally just a uh, ceramic type. Okay? So my other ceramic type, oh sorry I don't have, that is the only ceramic type I have. Okay, so those are the example of uh, capacitor, alright. So now we know how capacitor looks like. Okay. Alright, so now we know that this is one of the example. Now if you put the electrode, for example, this electrode here, instead of facing up, you put it facing down so you're going to get the design that looks like this okay so the design is going to look like this and you have two electrodes coming down like what i showed you just now but they serve the same function 
uh, except the why, why they have this sort of design and this sort of design the purpose is sometime in an electronic circuit board uh, we want them to be flat as flat as possible nothing stand up because so that we can slot another circuit board on top so we use this side this side is actually lying down okay lying down and this side is if the space is congested you want to make a very small but quite tall ele electronic system so you use this side because lying down is going to take place horizontally not vertically so this one is going to set space horizontally but it's going to make the equipment looks a bit thicker all right so that is the reason why we have this type of design but of course uh capacitor made it this way is going to be time consuming but uh another type of uh, design which is now mostly used is the polymer type okay polymer type well polymer type is exactly the same like this one except the manufacturing process is this what you need is a piece uh, a rolling okay one whole roll of what we call that uh polymer one whole roll that one whole roll can come from a gigantic roll from here let's say okay so this is a gigantic roll of polymer okay so it's gigantic polymer uh mostly it's transparent but it doesn't matter so this polymer here it does not actually conduct electricity so the purpose is to serve this thing you can make the polymer as thin as possible and then you coat okay you coat both sides with conducting material okay so this one is polymer sometimes it can be pvc also so we can coat by spraying or stamping something like gold stamping okay so this one is a process which is faster is by spraying so upon spraying on both sides you spray both sides with uh, the conducting material okay you spray both sides with conducting material so the other side also you spray so spray here and also here so now this side here by the time they roll over to these two uh, sprayer this both side is coated okay it's coated so now if we look at the front side the cross-sectional uh, 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 view we have this and then we have both side coated okay we have both side coated with a very thin layer of conducting material all right so something that looks like this so this is our coated conducting material so now it acts as a parallel plate see or not so these are conducting material okay conducting material so normally it's very thin aluminum uh, uh aluminum okay very thin aluminum it can be something else conducting okay zinc also can is theoretically anything metal that conduct electricity is uh is possible but i believe uh coating with aluminum is the easiest one because it can be formed to a very thin layer so you need you see by doing this process the process can be continued on what you need to do is to design that thing first how thin you want Okay, so this one is our dielectric now. The one in the center is our dielectric. So the 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 the, the limit is only the thickness of this one. Of course, you can change to some other material so that uh, the ability to store charge or the ability to insulate the electric uh, the two electron can be enhanced, make better, and so on. Of course, uh, now they have so many type of polymer or any other chemical mixed into the polymer to make it become a better and better dielectric. Okay, so uh, it's only the technique which is different. So this technique nowadays is also used to produce uh, this uh, uh, lithium ion polymer battery. Okay, by rolling them up one by one. So by rolling process because the rolling action is continuous so the only thing you need to do is to measure how long the strip are and then you cut off at a certain point automatically not like this this one you need to mix up this one is just like you are making the you know that you know face mask the process is more or less the same the problem is uh it is much more complicated and you might have possible contamination in between 
okay contamination in between all right so that is uh our polymer type and of course there are so many other types but the only type that we look at in our study is this type which come out in the syllabus is the parallel plate capacitor of course we only started the uh, study uh, not really in detail about the parallel plate so we assume uh, we can use the theory in parallel plate capacitor and then we apply it into any other capacitor design okay we're going to apply into all the type of capacitor that we know okay so we assume that these two parallel plate has two electrodes and the surface area is a a and then the separation between them is d all right and of course we can put some uh insulator inside there okay so this insulator have a certain uh characteristic that we're going to look at it in more detail later okay so now this is our basic uh, theory about capacitor, the design, the symbol use, and which type we're going to look at. So we're going to look at this type, okay, parallel plate capacitor. So remember, we have surface area A, separation D, and we have this dielectric, okay. This is the dielectric. So now, uh, so remember a few things here. The purpose of capacitor, to store charge, to release charge in a very short amount of time in the burst, okay. And then the electric field. And then the symbol use this type and this is a variable capacitor and the type that you're going to learn is parallel plate capacitor there are so many type actually capacitor uh, depend on the application all right so the next one is we're going to go into more detail about this parallel plate capacitor and i'm going to start using the symbol from here onwards okay page number two uh we look at the meaning of capacitance big capital letter C okay so uh, in in layman term okay in simple term okay in simple term capacitance is the ability of a capacitor to store charge it is the ability of the capacitor to store charge right so now the ability depends on a few things actually there are so many things but first we look at the actual definition okay the definition of c okay the definition of capacitance so we write here Capacitance C of a capacitor is the ratio of the charge on the plate to the potential difference across the plate okay so that means capacitance c is equal to the charge on the plate divided by the voltage across the plates so what does this mean okay so we look at the uh, the meaning when we draw a diagram like this let's assume you have a capacitor okay which is connected to a dc power supply okay which is connected to a dc power supply now this is our battery here and this is our capacitor okay so capacitor the symbol we use is c and this one the emf is e and then of course when you connect like that this side here is going to become positively charged and this side is negatively charged so we assume that how much charge on top here is positive q 
and this side here will be definitely negative Q okay so the voltage across them because the cap is connected directly to this battery so the voltage here is B so the capacitor is defined to be if you divide this value by the voltage B it gives us the capacitance all right so the unit for capacitance is charge which is in coulomb divided by voltage V so we have coulomb per volt and coulomb per volt is actually equal to farad okay uh, thanks to Michael Faraday okay so farad is the unit used but one farad is huge one farad is very uh, big value so normally in our lab the capacitor that we capacitor that we use have uh, like few thousand microfarad only there few thousand microfarad imagine you have a capacitor of one farad maybe the size is about that so when this thing is fully charged and you accidentally discharge it uh, you might not be able to use your eye and your ear again okay it's a very dangerous thing all right so uh, we look at one example how to use that equation okay our example one all right okay uh, let's assume you have a battery of 12 volt okay and it is connected to a capacitor of C equal to 150 microfarad okay now calculate the charge on the plates okay calculate the charge on the plate all right so to calculate the charge on the plate as we know is simply using uh, this equation uh, C equal to Q over V so the Q is equal to CV so the capacitor value is 150 microfarad and multiplied by voltage of 12 so I'm gonna have this value 150 micro is negative 6 okay and then we multiply by 12 so we get this 1.8 10 to the power negative 3 coulomb or this one is 1.8 milli coulomb all right so that is as simple as that all right okay so next one is uh we look at uh if you look at this equation if you want to know the capacitor you need to measure two things okay number one is the voltage and then followed by the q which is the charge on the plate well measuring voltage is very easy it's damn easy it's just you need is a good voltmeter but to measure a charge is not really that easy okay to measure a charge is not really that easy so what we need is another formula which allow us by looking at the physical appearance and the measurement of the property the physical property like geometry and so on we can